Hi everybody, welcome to the Stat Show with Rovers Chat. Talking to you off the back of two straight wins, um, a signing outside of the transfer window, and with two winnable games at home in quick succession. So things are looking up for the team and we're in the top half now and I think there's an air of positivity around the place. We can start to see the, the plans and the transfer activity that we had during the summer coming to fruition. Um, we're going to touch on all of these things and more, but first, um, I'd just like to welcome back the progress charts. Um, we haven't seen these since the, after the Fulham game in early August, so obviously quite a, a bit's changed since then. First of all, looking at the comparison to last season's fixtures, and this we've picked up five extra points now than than the matches that we had last season. Um, Reading away was three points where we got beat there last season. Um, Borough at home, we picked up three points where they beat us. And also we beat Millwall at home, which we only drew with them last season. So we've gone from minus three on the opening day where we lost to Charlton up to five extra points now. So that's starting to look quite positive. And also if we just flick through to the next one, which is the... um, the, the progress chart then we can see that we're the green line this season and um, we're kind of projecting at the moment after eight games um sixth place um that silver line there it denotes the average kind of sixth place points total um for the season the yellow line which is just below it is where where we were last season again that's average it's not the actual points trajectory that we took last season um so We can see that we're just hovering in between the two, just behind the sixth place line. So that's quite a positive thing as well. Well, Let's move on then to looking at our new signing, Lewis Holtby. Um, Like I say, it's it's rare to get a signing outside the transfer window to look at, but we're more than happy to to look at this one because it looks like quite an exciting one for us. Let's start by looking what Mowbray actually said when he was confirmed to have signed. Um, He... They was talking to him in the summer, first of all, and then he said when he got on a flight um, back home, then he didn't think he'd see him again, but he came in for uh, for extra talks, obviously, last week. And when he went into training, Marlborough said he's really tight with the ball, picks good options, very crisp passer, another good player to have in the squad. He's got good leadership qualities and a good personality, which I think are things that he finds really important in a new signing, that they have to fit in with the squad. They've got to show those kind of human qualities as well as being able to play football. Um, let's have a look at his career so far. He came through, um, he trained at Russian Munch and Gladbach as a youngster, then got um, released from there, signed to a second Bundesliga side um, in Aachen. He impressed there for two seasons, won, won the best German under-19 player. Um, off the back of that, he signed for Schalke, made a couple of loan spells as well. Ended up playing for Schalke 55 times, scoring 10 goals, which isn't a bad um, ratio for a midfielder. Off the back of that, um, Spurs were interested in, in a move to the Premier League. Spent three or four seasons in the Premier League, but didn't manage to nail down a regular spot at Spurs. Went on loan to Fulham, then went on loan to Hamburg. And that's where he uh, found a permanent position, stayed at Hamburg for five seasons. Um, in that time, Hamburg were relegated from the Bundesliga and didn't manage to um, achieve promotion last season. So it, it, reading the media around it, it seems like he fell out with the, the boss at Hamburg. And so he was released and um, that's all for our benefit because he's ended up coming to us. He's a German international. He played three times for Germany. He had he managed to win a lot of under twenty one caps as well. It's an excellent scoring record there for the German under twenty one side. So he does have a, a natural eye for goal. He scored, chipped in with goals throughout his career, and so we hope he'll do the same for us. If you actually have a look at his stats for his career. He's made over 350 league appearances, so obviously he's not been injury prone. He's not missed massive chunks of his career. He's not even 30 yet, and to have over 350 appearances is very impressive. As I said, he's not afraid to score. He's, he's got almost 50 goals, and it just in the, I could only find a figure for the league only assists, so just chip in with the assists as well. And that's quite a good um, overall career rating from who scored there, just shy of seven. 
um, looking more present day. So this is a film from 2015 to the present day. So he's kind of his Hamburg spell. Um, his XG and his XA are both over one in 10. So he does combine those and he, he should be contributing to a goal, hopefully one in five games, either scoring it himself or assisting it. Um, he manages to put in a decent cross every game. He does a lot more dribbles than what I would have expected before doing the research. Half of them are successful, um, but he's obviously not afraid of taking players on, which is, we, we always need more of that going forward. And he, he always puts a, a shot in. Obviously, he put a shot in at the weekend, which he probably should have scored. We'll come and look at that later. But um, that's a good start for him on, on Saturday. Just want to have a quick look at his, his heat map. We were thinking about where he might fit into the squad long term. Um, yeah, even though he's, he can use both feet, as we'll again see later on, but he's quite predominantly left footed. But he seems to have played a lot on the right hand side um, since 2015. So Hamburg have obviously been using him on the right hand side of midfield. He can play all across the midfield, as you can see from that heat map, though. So a versatile member of the midfield. And that just adds to the squad depth, really. So we'll just have a, a quick look at Holtby on Saturday and um, when he came on and what kind of impact he made. Have a look at a couple of video clips of him in action. So we're going to see the quality of Lewis Holtby on the ball here. Um, we're joining the action in the 75th minute and Elliot Bennett's just going to look down the line. Holtby's come on about five minutes earlier but we've not really seen him on the ball yet. We've seen him tackling and putting pressure on defenders but he reacts well to the touch there. And what a great first touch on his right foot. And you can see him, he's looking like he's going to switch to play. But he plays a nice little disguised pass into Sam Gallagher, who's obviously got Dak there just to his, his left-hand side. He's seen him, tries to cut inside, but doesn't manage to do so. Our defender does well, to be fair. But that there is just a, that's his first real touch, and he's just one foot on the right foot, one touch on the right foot, and then a lovely through pass on his left. We're quickly going to review um, Lewis Holtby's big chance that he had um, near the end of the game. We've just had a corner where Danny Graham's headed it over and uh, Reading have played a short goal kick into Tyler Blackett here. There's Danny Graham and there's um, Holtby. And Graham is going to now go off and press. He's just had a look behind him to make sure that people are following him in the press. And this is something that Rovers have actually done really well this season and um, pressed from the front, usually with Gallagher or Armstrong, but Obviously, Graham's only just come onto the field, so full of energy. Presses Blackett, who tries to play it into, I think it's Azaria in midfield. But he's been pressed on one side by Dak, and then a bit of a loose touch, but Travis just flies in there, shows the commitment that we know that he, he always possesses, and it's a great challenge. And then we have um, a counter-attack, and that's the great thing about winning the ball so high up the field. Hope he's making the right-to-left run. Um, there's a space there because uh, Reading's right back's gone forward. Dax played it into him, tries the first time finish with the left foot. He's got a bit of pressure on him, but I think he knows and we know that he probably should have scored there from only seven yards out. Puts his hands to his head and um, Johnson appealing for something. I'm not quite sure whether it's a penalty or a corner he's appealing for, but no. It's uh, Holby's just stuck it over the bar. But it shows that he's got that desire to get forward into the box and score goals. And we do need more people to contribute goals in this team. So it's good that he's shown that desire there. The added options that we've now got in the midfield mean that we can be quite flexible with the way that we set up our team, which I think is what uh, a big thing of what Mowbray's been aiming for. We've got a better standard of footballer now, so we can be more flexible with the way that we play. Um, the majority of the seasons so far, we still have set up in the 4-2-3-1, which has kind of been our kind of standard formation for the last three or four years. But look at the strength and depth that we've now got. I've just put together a, a kind of composite lineup, going with kind of a first choice in, in the bold there, and then underneath that kind of listed some squad options. And I found um, at least two very good championship options for all the positions, apart from centre-back. Centre, centre that's really far removed from the way that we were when Mowbray took over, where we were struggling to get 11 players of championship quality in the team. And obviously we ended up being relegated. So um, we're doing a good, re I think they're doing a good rebuilding job. 
and it also allows us to change formations if we need to. So obviously against Millwall, uh, Mowbray changed the system quite unexpectedly to a three at the back, which is something I've been advocating for quite a while because I think we've got the type of centre-backs that would really flourish there. So I've put up um, a formation there where looked at strength and depth there. It's not as well covered because obviously the three centre-backs, we haven't got as many, we haven't got any cover for it, all three. But and it's also a little bit more central midfield heavy. But it's a good formation to use every now and again. And it was against Millwall because look up the average positions that the team had there. It meant that we could push on Greg Cunningham. And if you look at the number five there on the left-hand side of the, the graphic, Cunningham was basically playing as a, as a left winger. is far further forward than Elliot Bennett was, which is quite a surprise thinking of Bennett's background as a winger and a, a forward. Um, but it was Cunningham who was taking the, the initiative on the left-hand side there. And that did mean that we could have a lot more forward players in in the middle as well so we've got obviously um armstrong and and dak there in, in the central areas but also um downing and john buckley pressing forward from midfield that's one i think that was the main reason that he, he switched to a three is that we could control the central areas of the pitch against millwall a lot better and also with them having the three center backs against their tall forward Smith, there's number 23 in the graphic there for Millwall. It meant that we had enough pe people around to win the second balls in the central area. So it's quite a canny change of formation there and one that I hope that we're going to use um, when the situation dictates quite often. Also, if you look at Millwall's average positions there, they've played a back four, three, five, 15 and 12 there across the back. Um, their average positions show quite a big gap in the middle of that of the two central defenders there. Um, which obviously we we exp we could exploit. That's mainly in possession where they had that gap, but still we had a numerical superiority in the right areas of the pitch. If we quickly look at the XG plot from Ben Mayhew's experimental three six one, and uh, we could see that although we'd obviously scored in the first half, um, that was a very low XG chance. But in the second half, we did really well, created a lot more chances than what we would usually do and ended up with an XG of almost two, which is one of the highest of the season. So the formation obviously worked really well. But we uh, There was speculation as to what formation we would use against Reading and we kind of switched back to a regular sort of formation. The image on the left there is the first 11. So you can see our back four there, Cunningham number five, um, Williams at number three, 26, Lanahan, and then 31, Bennett. Um, a usual sort of spread there, and then two holding midfielders. And then Stuart Downing there, number 19, not playing really on the right, but cutting in quite a lot. Whereas Armstrong held his width very impressively on the left and, and always gave us an out ball. And Gallagher kind of filling in on the right-hand side a little bit, swapping in and around with Downing and Dak. But again, that gives us some good numbers in the middle of the the forward area which is where you're going to score your goals and it allows Bennett to use the his pace and his uh, durability to run up and down that right wing and create overlaps and gives a, a crossing option from there um when we brought the subs on so the image on the right there is where the subs came on so number 22 Lewis Holtby playing on that right hand side allowed Downing to go over to the left and fill that gap um he didn't quite play on the right hand side either. He cut in quite a lot. So that seems to be what Mowbray wants from his right sided attacker is to allow Bennett to go up and down and cut in and for them to cut inside. And that's where Holtby, as we saw earlier, got his, his good chance from. Graham playing right up top, right against the last man, not moving around as much as, as Gallagher was. And then Johnson just basically copying um, Corey Evans' role, maybe playing a little bit further forward. Um, the XG plot from the game on Saturday shows that it was quite tight in terms of XG chances created. Um, but the difference was we took our chances that we weren't really taking in the early part of the season. And to be honest, when we're 2-0 up, then we are always going to sit back a little bit more. We probably sat back a bit too much at first and then regained our composure later on in the match, which we'll talk about in a second more detail and see a video about how we kind of controlled the end of the game so from that period of where we scored um our second goal through bradley dak 
Um, we just didn't create anything for the next 20 odd minutes and allowed Reading to push onto us. And that's when they they scored their goal and created another decent enough chance. So those the substitutions that were made there where we brought on Holtby, Graham and Johnson, all of whom are vastly experienced players, made a massive difference to us in the end. Yeah, fair enough, we didn't score another goal and make the game safe, but it also we, we stopped them from having massive chances right at the end of that game there. So good use of the squad depth from Mowbray there. A lot of people have talked since then that the, about the average age of the Rovers team and how bringing in the extra experience has really helped us. So I just took a little look at what the average age of our kind of first choice 11 this time last year against this t- our current team. And actually the average age, if you just take a literal um, mean of the ages from the two first choice 11s, the average age is exactly the same. I think the key difference is the quality of the players so bringing in Downing, Johnson, Holtby and Cunningham um, give us greater quality and experience Um, so if we take out Nianbe and Evans and Smallwood who were first choice this time last season replace them with those other three um, maybe even Raya and Walton Walton's had a very um, good start to his career with us then it's the, possibly a difference of quality rather than the actual age and experience of the players. Or maybe it's just experience at a higher level, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now we're going to see how that kind of manifested itself in the game on Saturday and have a look at a couple of minutes of the closing spell. To illustrate the kind of squad depth that we've managed to get now and the experience that Mowbray has added to the team, just wanted to show this bit of play. Into it. That can help just pause the commentator there. Um, so at this stage, we've brought on Bradley Johnson. We've brought on Lewis Holtby and Danny Graham, who's just taken a knock there, but kept possession. Holtby got the ball there. And um, so we've made all three substitutions. And this is 90 minutes now, and usually we're hanging on at this stage. We've already had the ball for a minute when I started this recording. And you can see how just how composed the guys are on the ball. Lovely player down there towards Downing, another experienced dead. Knows that he doesn't necessarily need to cross it, but tries to do something with it anyway. And we're just keeping the ball, getting a foul. And then look at that from Travis. Again, he did that for the Holby chance, all the way pushed up and uh, winning the ball back just as soon as we lose it. And in last season... We would have been trapped on the edge of our own 18-yard box, fending off attack after attack, and eventually we succumbed to them last season. But here, how long have we had the ball now? Two minutes, I think it is. And just a little note in this little passage of play here, Lewis Holtby, left-footed, Stuart Downing, left-footed. Same with Bradley Johnson, Greg Cunningham, all lending really good balance to this team. We've got half of the team now, which are left-footers. Still keeping the ball. It's funny because like, you're thinking, well, if this was any other time in the game, they would just go and try and create a chance and score. But obviously, in the 92nd minute we're in now, still keeping the ball, keeping Redding at arm's length. Brilliant athleticism there from Holtby. And eventually we do end up with a shot. But it's the good type of shot because it pushes it around for a corner and we get to waste more time. But there's two... So that's two minutes of a recording there where... We just kept the ball and took all the momentum out of Reading. And that's how to kill a game. And that's where this squad depth and the extra experience that we've now got has really come into play. I'd like to thank you again for watching the Stat Show with Rovers chat. Hopefully you've enjoyed our in-depth look at Lewis Holtby and how the squad is, is developing. Um, hopefully we'll see a couple of home wins in the next week or so and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks time and we can have a look at those please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to make sure you're keeping up with everything Rovers chat follow us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram thank you for watching see you later